Joining us now from Washington is Jenny Town. She's a research analyst at the Stimson Center and also managing editor and producer at 38 North. That is actually one of the research centers that has uncovered this work at the North Korean test site. And so, Jenny, explain to us exactly what you think is going on at this launch site. Well, I think it's first important to remember that this isn't a missile test site. Um, this is where North Korea has done its satellite launches over the years. Um, and they've invested a lot of money into building up this site since about 2011. Um, so this is their showcase site. It was surprising originally that they were willing to give, um, to start to dismantle this launch pad and the engine test stand there to begin with, um, because they've always considered this part of their civilian space program rather than their missile test test program, and it has caused problems in the past. Um, I think the bigger point here now is that they had offered this as a unilateral confidence-building measure um, at the beginning of U.S. DPRK talks. Now that they've reversed that decision, I think it does signal um, a frustration in the, in the lack of progress that's been made on both sides um, of the equation here. Um, and it does now, as they rebuild those capabilities, it does now open um, the possibility of of seeing satellite launches again in the future. Um, we don't see test preparations right now, um, but we do, again, they are rebuilding the capabilities to do that. Jenny, before we get into the next step in negotiations or lack thereof, the United States says this site, or they believe this site, is just a sort of front for developing intercontinental ballistic missiles. So would you say that's inaccurate? Well, there, there's parts of the facility that can be applicable. So there is the engine test stand there. Um, it is the largest test stand that North Korea has in terms of their engine test stands. Um, and it's where they've tested the largest liquid fuel engines that they've built over the years. Um, but the launch pad itself has never been used for ballistic missiles. Um, certainly it could be, but again, if, if North Korea is launching an intercontinental ballistic missile, they're not going to, you know, the, this is the, the least desirable way to do it. It to be put it on a pad, have to fuel it up over the course of an hour or so um, so that it's highly visible. This has always been used for um, satellite launches um, and the types of rockets that they've used for the past three, um, they've sort of exhausted what they can learn um, that would be applicable to a military capacity. Uh, Jenny, it's always treacherous territory to try to read the mind of Kim Jong-un, but you're more qualified than most. We've had two failed summits. Now we have uh, this apparent work at this site, put it together and put us in the mind of what Pyongyang may be thinking now. Well, I don't think we've had two failed summits. Um, the first summit, you know, we did come away with an agenda and an agreement to um, the types of issues that need to be addressed in order to move our relations forward and move the agenda forward. Um, and I think that's why you saw North Korea willing to do some of these confidence-building measures after the Singapore summit in order to give breathing space um, and build momentum for the political process. I do think both sides were expecting to walk away from Hanoi with some kind of an interim deal. Um, and it sounds like both sides also, though, overreached. And once they got to Hanoi, really raised the stakes of what it is that they were asking for. Um, so, you know, it's it's disappointing that there wasn't a deal and there will be, you know, implications as to, you know, a missed opportunity and how we get back on track. Um, but it's, you know, I do think both sides are now frustrated also because they, they did expect um, certain political will to make certain decisions easier than what they have been. Um, and I think both sides now are looking for ways to to ex both express that, um, but trying to figure out if they want to move forward. Right. They sort of skipped all the yeah. traditional diplomatic steps and just went straight to the highest yeah. level between Trump and Kim Jong-un. So, Jenny, again, with your familiarity uh, with the North Korean regime, now that they have resumed construction at this site, how do you think it would be best for the United States to respond to this? Well, I think it's important not to overreact and not to go back into this, you know, starting to do sanctions and, and things in response. Um, I think it's important to understand, again, this was a unilateral measure. It was not, you know, a part of a U.S. DPRK deal. There's no agreement yet. Um, it's certainly concerning and it's certainly not helpful to the diplomatic process. Um, but I think the point is, is that we, if we want to continue negotiating, 
negotiating. We need to get back to the table as soon as possible um, to try and figure out how to prevent um, this activity from continuing and, and try and get back to see if we can get the interim deal um, to start building some restrictions and start rolling back some of the programs as soon as possible. Oh, 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 oh,